Hey everyone. All right, how's everybody doing tonight? Um, gonna have another one of these uh, little video sessions. Tonight we're talking about pebbling and scraping. Um, good to see everybody's here. I don't think we're gonna hang around and wait for everybody. If they pop in, they pop in, that'll be great. Um, so I, I'm Sean Olson. Uh, head USA ice technician um, and Lauren Rich is I apologize for your exact title but she does member services stuff and also a huge part of the ice crew um, I think you're a director aren't you I'm member services manager manager well keep 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 working but <laughs> but um, no everything's Wired up here, uh, we've got a great set of slides Lauren put together actually. So we'll, uh, <clears throat> we can just get going right away here. Um, Lauren's actually gonna start out with some scraping stuff. And at any time, if you have questions, either raise your hand or put something in the chat or just, you know, go ahead and speak up if you have questions because this works the best when we've got some interaction instead of just uh, us up here blabbing for an hour. So, if uh, Lauren, if you want to get trucking here, we can yep. get started. Uh, so we're going to cover, like Sean said, we're going to talk a little bit about scraping and we're going to talk a little about pebbling. So we're going to start with scraping um, and just a quick overview of what we're going to see: the why we scrape, kind of how, what kind of scraping patterns you can use, and what to look for when you're scraping. Um, so the first thing that you do when you're scraping for the season, the first, one of the first things that you do in the season is after you've, you know, put down all of your water and your markings and everything, you're going to, you're going to scrape the ice. Um, so you're going to get all that scum off. And then once you start alternating between pebbling and scraping, you're, you're scraping the, the pebble off and letting the, the next layer of pebble that you add kind of bring up the low spots and you're keeping the high spots from getting higher and kind of bringing everything into level. Um, you will then use scraping between uh, between games to kind of remove all of that old used pebble that's not good for for curling anymore, and and kind of keep keep the ice nice and flat um, between games as well. So there are three basic scraping patterns. Um, there's a three, a four, and a six, and then there are other patterns that you can use that are kind of combinations of these. For example, like a seven pass would be a combination of a three and a four together. Um, typically, if you alternate between a, a kind of rotate through a three, four, three, six pattern, that typically gives you pretty good results, uh, pretty reliably. There might be some inconsistencies or or special quirkiness in your in your club that might um, benefit from changing that up a little bit. But if you don't know where to start, typically three, four, three, six is a pretty safe bet. Um, and then in scraping is one of the the areas in ice making where it's good to have a little bit of variability. So um, if you if you have any defects in your blade or um, or imperfections in your ice, if you're going over the same part of the ice with the same part of the blade over and over and over, um, you're going to start to exacerbate some of those those problems. So if you have a little end that's digging in, then if you're hitting the same part of the ice over and over with that same spot, you're going to start to create some runs there. So if you vary just by a few inches some of these, these patterns, then you're going to kind of um, wash out some of the imperfections that you might see in the blade and, and you won't be damaging your ice if there's any anything wrong, any flaws. Um, then we have a question. Sorry, I can't see the, the screen when I'm presenting. So if anybody has questions, just Say something, please. Um, so we're going to start with a three pass, which is pretty basic. You just kind of go up the center and then up and around the sides. Um, you have a straight blade for this. It's just there's no angle on it. Um, you want about a six or eight inch, six or eight inches of overlap between um, the sideline passes and the center pass, so you can kind of see it we're in that darker gray area. Um, and then you don't quite go out to the sidelines on a three pass. 
with a four pass, you start to put some angle on the blade. So you've got the blade angled away from the center line for the center two passes, and then you have it angled kind of toward, in towards the center line for the sideline passes. Um, particularly on the sideline passes, if you if you have bumpers or dividers on your sheets, then you really want to make sure that your blade is angled kind of away from the dividers and away from the sidelines. This protects the blade in the event that anything happens and you might bump the bumper. Um, then you're hitting kind of with the, the back of the beam and not with the cutting edge of the blade. And you're protecting that, that leading edge. And then the last pass is a six pass. Um, so again, you're just covering the whole sheet with, with six passes up and down. You have the blade angled in on the center lines and then for, for up and down and then out, up and down, and then you go out to the sidelines and have it angled in again. So for the four and the six, something that I should mention is that there's holes along the top of the beam that you can see when you're driving the scraper. And you typically are going to be wanting to, to aim for having some of those holes on the sideline or on the center line. So with a four pass, um, you might want to have the the center line on, or the the one or the two hole. Sean, can you let that person in? You bet. Okay. Um, you want to have like the one or the two hole on the center line, and then for one and one and a one and a half hole on the center line, and then for a six pass, you might want to go out to the two hole on the center line for the first two, and then um, <coughs> go towards the edge for the second two. If that makes sense. So. Here, um, what you're looking for, and I'll zoom in on a little bit on this so you can kind of see a little bit better. What we've got in the top left here is really what you would like to see um, all the time if you can. It's it's kind of hard. It can be hard on your blade. It can hard. It can be hard to cut this hard, but. This is going to give you a really nice base for your pebble and for your games if you can get down to this level when you're cutting. Um, I think what we see at our club, and typically what we see, what I what I've seen at a few other clubs, is a little bit more like this. So you've so you've got more of the pebble left on there from the previous game and the previous draw. So um, it's just not going to be as good of a base for your for your next event if you if you have this much left. Seems like if you're not cutting hard enough, that your smaller pebble or even your, you know, if you're not putting it onto a flat sheet of ice the best you can, you know, that pebble's going to sit lower. And it's even if it's wearing normally, you're going to get down to the pad sooner and it's just, it's just going to play slower and uh, give you more problems if you don't have, you know, if you're not cutting enough and that pebbles actually falling into a hole you know um it's going to be shorter than what you think it is maybe you need to go with a size bigger if you can't cut as hard um, it's hard to cut as hard as that top left one by yourself you know get everything set and cutting hard you, you might not even be able to take off with the scraper when your blade is that sharp and cutting that hard sometimes you got to back off a couple turns start have somebody turn it back on you know, before you get in the house, um, impossible by yourself. So you might have to do a little, if you can't get some help to be there with you, you might have to make some concessions. Um, and this is, this is just kind of showing what all of the, the full three, four, three, six rotation looks like. Um, so you can see that there's a little bit more cutting in the center. Um, this is where, you know, you're walking, your rocks are playing, you're sweeping. So, so the center gets a little bit more abuse, a little bit, a lot more abuse during a game. Uh, and so you want to, you want to cut there a little bit more and then out the sidelines, you know, you're not playing out, out as much here. So it's a little bit easier to cut that pebble off between games and get down to, to this nice, um, flat pad. And I'll hand it over to Sean now for pebbling. Okay, Brad's got a question in the chat here. It's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, and it, 
you know, every club's a little different. Um, some places there's a ton of room behind the hacks. Some places the hacks are a foot from the wall. But ideally, I like to kind of back into, you know, the corner, whether you're on the the end with the stones or the end without the stones, you know, depends on where you park your scraper. But if you back into that corner alongside the hack and kind of 45 the machine, um, you can get that blade. It's it's almost two feet away from the hack. So if you're trying to take off and you stick the blade or or have a have a problem, that uh, that problem is quite a ways away out of the play, and uh, you you've got a chance to be fixing that mistake. And still have the game going. Um, some people will park right by the hack, or I've seen people start in front of the hack. Uh, if you dig a blade there, that game's not starting on time. If you're if you're cutting close, so it's easier for me to go off to the side and, and swoop in. You know, if you're starting on the center or, or near the center with one of your other passes. Um, you know. Some places you can continue on each end, just go around the hack or over the hacks. Uh, just keep driving. Other places you don't have all the room. You got to swing past the hack and pull in and stop and then uh, turn around, get reset, take off again. It's it. Uh, the only real difference there is uh, maybe coverage and definitely a little bit of time. Um, but you just do what you can with what you have to cut all of the sheet. Um, when I'm walking along with people who aren't quite comfortable with the scraper yet, I like to tell them to keep in mind you want to be squared up and on your line where you're going to scrape that sheet and make that pass before you get to the back line. Um, you don't want to be doing too much driving around, getting lined up in the house. Um, you know, with each different setup in each club, it's not always feasible to be lined up with some of the patterns. You're still finishing a turn, but you want to be smooth at least if you're going through the house and catching up with yourself. So it's it's a nice reminder to yourself to like, I want to be done before I get to the back line. And if I'm not, I want to finish smoothly. So you're not making big digs or turns or something right next to the center line of the to the back of the house. He's got on the floor and sleeping. Are you my fox? I need And then uh, Dave just asked here too, um, when you are cutting a tripe, cutting hard, uh, it's it's good to keep that blade cold anyway. Um, but if it if it is too warm, it's you know it's hot metal on ice. It's Going to give you more trouble. So if you keep that blade cooled down and ready to go before you cut, again, that's another thing you don't always have time to do. Um, it's good to have help if you're in that situation. You can get going. Once you start moving, add your turns and and get started that way. But if you don't have that luxury of help and time, sometimes you just can't cut as hard. So you you make a decision. Do you do another cut on top of the one you just did, or or uh, extra passes to to get where you know is going to be a good surface to pebble for you to play on? So hopefully those answered your questions, fellas. If they didn't, um, go ahead Sean, and ask how does for some the, clarification. How does the surface temperature impact how hard you're cutting? Um, if you're a little warmer, sometimes it can cut easier. Um, and you know, when it's colder, it's as stands to reason, it's just going to be a little harder to cut. Uh, you want to make sure your blades in good shape. Um, if you're comfortable with, uh, with honing it and, you know, if you're doing that safely, keep it honed. Um, you're not going to get any extra life out of it so much as you're going to just keep a nice sharp edge for for what you do have there. Um, I don't think you'll ever have to take any turns off because you've uh, honed the blade 
particular time, but you won't have to add as many as quickly. So it, it adds to the life and it's just a sharper, cleaner cut for longer. Um, yeah, we can jump into this, uh, the pebbling now. Um, you know, that was, that was 15 minutes of a course we could spend a whole week on, but um, we're gonna keep so going here into the Brad does the have one more question. Oh, yep. Yeah. Um, if you don't have help while you're scraping, how do you manage the snow being generated from the scraper? Um, so at at my club, what we do is just kind of, we don't have a lot of room behind our hacks, so we kind of have to stop um, on pretty much every pass anyway. And so you just kind of try to keep the snow on the blade of the, the away ends. And then as you're making your turns, and then as you come home, just kind of go back to the boards and then back up just a little bit. Um, so you don't have to lift the blade as much, but you don't want to be backing up over uncut pebble. Um, but yeah, just kind of drop the snow on on one side as best you can. Is what we do at our club. Sean's probably got better ideas. Yeah, no, it's yeah. Um, there's uh, whatever it takes. You know, if you're by yourself, you're not going to be up there cleaning the blade looking anyway. So you're just you're happy with where you're cutting. You you get it cut. Um, if you know, like you said, some places they try and keep it on and get it all to one end so there's less to do at the far end when you're cleaning with however their setup is and it's you know just easier to clean the bigger pile on one end um it's it's just a little extra work by yourself and you you got to decide um when i do it by myself i like if it's if everything's cold and and you're not having problems with it sticking you know, like in a club, it's usually everything's cold enough and, and you're okay to leave it for a while. I'll scrape all the sheets and then just spend time cleaning. Um, some people do one sheet or a couple of sheets at a time, you know, just whatever you feel like is the most efficient way to, to move through it. You know, um, you, you don't want to take any shortcuts and rush, but you don't want to waste a bunch of time going back and forth and doing that either it's I, I feel better if i every time i go back and forth they've got a purpose and i feel like i'm getting something done instead of just walking back and forth but it can be yeah. handy when you're going by yourself to have a corn broom with you um in case you need to to get any snow out of the way where you might be driving you don't want to drive over the snow on the tires yeah i i have one on the hood with me when i'm going uh, sometimes i use it sometimes i don't you know just like you said if something comes up and you need to clean a path for yourself or or you uh want to stop check you know if you're lifting the blade you should stop and clean the blade off before you pick it up so you don't get ice under the blade when you set it back down um yeah it's it's good to have one with for sure Yeah, I don't know if that was a good answer for you, Brad, but just do do what you can. Get uh, get a, get a few young people interested in helping with the ice and tell them it's really important to pick it all up. So, but it's a good job for the juniors, and they're part of it. Um, well, as far as pebbling, how to pebble? Yeah, I don't know if I knew the answer. But uh, the the biggest thing is uh, when you how to pebble is do a good job and practice. Um, and if you don't feel like you're doing a good job or or you're getting some feedback that things could be a little better, um, hopefully this is another time you need somebody with you to watch or or even video. Um, we got a couple slides coming up here. Lauren fell on her sword and uh, took one for the team. She's brave enough to put her pebbling out on video for the world to see, and that's uh, it's much appreciated. And that's how you get better. Um, it's practice, practice, practice. And how do you get better? Well, what you're looking for is nice, evenly distributed pebble that's not too narrow and not too wide you know it's 
Goldilocks has got to be just right. Um, and it, it just takes practice and muscle memory and many times going back and forth up and down the sheets. Um, some people are super good at it. Some people do it for a long time and there's still lots of room for improvement. And there's frankly, some people in some clubs I see that I would never let in front of me with a water can. Um, just because as this last piece of this slide says, the dangers of poor pebbling are absolutely ruining a sheet and you can do it. Poor pebbling can ruin a curling sheet within a couple of games and you won't scrape your way out of that problem. It's, it's in the sheet that, that, uh, that bad pattern is in there. You can't scrape it out with more pebble scraping. It's, it's, you have to flood to make it better. Um, you don't have time to do that every so many days. It's most clubs don't flood often enough anyway. So it's hard. Um, and you're working with volunteers in all these clubs. They want to help. They don't want to do a bad job. So if you get people that understand it's important and want to work hard to be proficient, um, Take some time with them, work with each other, and uh, make sure that the people that are helping between games or helping when you're scraping during, the, you know, the day for before leagues um, are capable and doing a nice job, and always willing to take some constructive criticism and uh, improve. So. So you don't have problems with uh, the ice getting out of shape and and there's nothing to do and you don't have time in the schedule to flood for however long and then you, your members are going to let you know that that ice is out of shape. You know, even when it's great, you get enough feedback. So um, probably hit that next one, Lauren. Um, what I usually like is a, a cold base and a hot top. Um, put on, you know, if I start on the home end with the base, I want to start on the away end with the top just to make sure any little imperfections in my technique. When I'm going one way, if I'm strong on the right side, I want to go the other direction and be strong on the other side of the sheet going back, um, even though they are a different size. It, it still makes things level and even vary that, you know, don't always start on sheet A at the home end with the base. Make sure you're starting opposite ends to, to make, to make your uh, variations consistent. If that's another terrible sentence by me, but um, just try to make everything as even as you can. So um, what we call the cold water, um, a lot of places, it's whatever temperature comes out of the tap. Um, some places will heat their water to get the gases out and let it cool and use it that way. Um, other places they've found where they mix a little warm water in or hot water in with their cold water to, you know, make some 80, 90 degree water for their cold base. Um, for me, what I call um, the hot water is heated, you know, I think we got, what, 120 on here, um, at least that. Um, as we'll, we've talked before with the water quality, um, heating the pebble water takes your good, clean, zero TDS water that still has some gases and whatnot trapped in it, lets that gas out so you have a a stronger, more solid drop of water there that's going to last through the game. Um, uh, you know, I've, in as far as that theory goes, I like to just run it up to 140 and call it good because um, that's as hot as our heater goes. And uh, there's not been many times, I can think of a few times off the top of my head where we've had pebble that was too good didn't wear and that caused a problem because you need the pebble to wear a little bit but but uh 
we start with a, a fine, a smaller bottom and a bigger top. And that smaller bottom one is just there as insurance. If at the end of a game, your your game pebble is worn too far and uh, you've got something to finish the last couple ends on there. So I've talked to, talked to a guy the other day. They only put one pebble on, you know, what we're, we're playing six, you know, sometimes slow players, you get six ends in. So you're, you're playing probably six to eight ends in a club. Um, you don't, you know, you don't have Colin Huffman sweeping every rock. Your your pebble's going to make it a little longer. Guys like me sweeping. Um, so he just puts uh, one one pass of game pebble on, and that that works in his club. It lasts, and uh, they they play their their first draw fine. Then their second draw, they put another coat on. Third draw, another coat. It's less to cut off. Um, that's the the experimentation and whatnot he's tried and found that works in his club. It, you know, that was the first time I heard of that. I've heard of using a uh, small, you know, the same pebble head, once cold, once hot, and playing that way. It, uh, it just takes trial and error and record keeping in your club to see what works in your club. Um, if I walk into a place and everywhere we go, what we try to start with is a, a 76 cold for the base and a hot 74 for the top. That is, seems to be a good uh, baseline. Uh, we don't usually have to move too far from that if we do move from it at all. We get, uh, get the conditions we like usually and uh, can, can nip the right amount to get the curl we want and the speed and and uh, it's just a good starting point but um, some places with the different conditions and configurations of every club um, it takes a little little time to find out what works the best and then like I said before with this last point the that first or the top pebble the second pass is what most of the game, if not all of the game, is played on. Hopefully all the game. Um, and, you know, like I said, it, as it wears in the sweeping and the the temperature and the airflow and stuff wear on that pebble, it, it's actually good that it wears some through the game because that keeps your speed in consistent curl. If it doesn't wear, you actually slow down and straighten out. So it's important that it does wear a small bit through the game and that's what keeps your consistency and your the way your rocks move so uh, next one lauren uh, the technique this is the part that takes all the practice um you know you st i start in front of the hack on the end i'm starting on kind of reach out get the arm going and uh get everything done behind the hack, get, you know, all in one motion as you start walking um, up to speed, the arms going good by the time you get to the back line. And then, you know, you don't stop until you get to the other end. And, uh, we try to, this is another, what we start with and we may or may not adjust as we go is uh, we go 40 seconds from back line to back line. That, seems to be a good baseline sometimes you need to go a little quicker sometimes a little slower um, human nature you're within a couple of seconds either side of it anyway um, we do get proud of ourselves if we hit a dead 40 take a picture and send to the group um, just that's because we're weird and that's fun to us but um the biggest thing is as you're when you're done pebbling and you look and you see that you've done it well like i said you know the muscle memory um it's what works for me with the equipment we have at our club to get that pebble out there like it should be you want to be swinging your arm quick enough and uh so you're covering the whole sheet you're getting that pebble interspersed out there the book says you need one and a half pebbles per square centimeter um, Sure, 
I mean, you got to put a number on something if you're writing a book. But, you, you know, you just nice, even spacing. Uh, make sure your pebble head's clean and you've, you're getting good uh, singular drops out there. Not, you know, some uh, stringy connected pebble doesn't, isn't the goal. You know, you just want each drop. Um, you want here it says make sure your pebble head's not twisted. You want that pebble head nice and level, swinging back and forth on the even plane. Um, and you've got to keep up that pace for that whole sheet. You don't want to get tired halfway down and and uh, have something change. You want good even for you know 16 feet wide for 150 feet. Uh, let's see. It's okay to tip away from you a little bit, um, but not too much. If you if you tip away too much, you're actually going to build pebble in the center of the sheet. But if you're standing up, you know, depending on how you pebble, um, the way I pebble with the heads I use, a little tip away from me keeps the water off of me and onto the playing surface. I'm not sure why they used to say it, but you know the. I've talked to some people in the past. Well, you should be, you should have a wet shoulder when you're done. I said, why? Why would my pebble water be on your shoulder instead of where I'm playing my game? You know, um, so a little tip away is okay. Um, when you're going back and forth, you want to make sure, you know, swing it across and get back and like to have it moving fairly quickly. Um, that's not always up to everybody's uh, capabilities. Um, I, and we'll probably talk about it later or in the next slides or two, but some clubs will have quite a long extension on their pebble can because you have members that aren't quite as proficient and they uh, move a little slower. So that longer head or longer extension allows a slower arm movement to get the, get the pebble on well. Um, Lauren's here nervous, so we'll just let her get through this part where we get to watch her pebble and see all the wrong things she did. She got two X's and one green check mark. I'd have went the other way, but but it's it's nice of her to show us the X's too. Um can on my screen that's not horribly big. Is can anyone else? Ah, oh, there we go. Lauren's making it bigger. It's awesome. But this is the first one. Are they videos or just pictures? The first two are pictures, then the last one is video. Okay. But yes, yeah, so, so this first one, you know, looks real good. Just a little bit tipped away. Um, off she goes. I didn't don't remember what the note said, Lauren. Yeah, nice and level, even. Yep. Just barely tipped away. Um, you note how. The middle of Lauren's body is not in the sheet. The middle of the the arm that's pebbling is in the middle of the sheet. Um, you know, you don't want to, unless the way you throw, you just kind of line up. So you're throwing even on both sides. Some people, it works to walk down the middle. Some people shift over even further than where Lauren's lined up there. Um, you just have to find out what works for you to do a good job. So everybody plays on good sheet of ice um the next one is what tipped down a little too far yeah it was a little kind of and the flared out twisted it's just absolutely awful i don't know why tom let you do that no um but yeah you know that the head's twisted a little the the arms swinging down um that's that's going to build up over time it's i'm guessing this is a um you know, not a horribly exaggerated uh, example of less than perfect, but uh, it's just every little bit. If you have somebody standing on the end watching, they can see if your pebble head's twisted and the, the pebble's a little higher on one side or the other, they'll let you know, you know, you can fix it for the next sheet. We'll just holler at each other and you're uncomfortable for that sheet because you roll your wrist one way or another and uh you know make it better you know instead of sacrificing the whole sheet but um wh whatever you need to do to help each other get better 
in the last one, it's got this reference line in there. You can see that the the pebble head isn't going exactly even. We call it like tomahawk and or chopping or whatever, but can't say that anymore. But uh, it just it's just kind of slicing from high to low on each side as she swings. You let her play and. So one one thing that I like for me that, that has been helpful is getting somebody like this to, to get a slow-mo video view. So a lot of smartphones now like have this slow-mo function. Um, and I think that's a really helpful tool because then you can see more of what the actual motion that you're making looks like. If you have a, a full speed video, um, unless you're going pretty slow as it is, it's kind of hard to see if you're getting any of that twisting or flaring in the um, in the pebble head at the towards the ends if you're going up or or if you're keeping it nice and flat. So um, if you have questions about how you're pebbling, um, I like to have somebody get a slow-mo video of me probably every few months when I'm pebbling. Oh, those are good. Um, next one is which? Yeah, I'm zoom in on practice, these two. practice, practice, practice. This is some, some pictures of a well-shaved sheet with the base pebble on. And uh, it's easier to take pictures in the colored colored parts of the house. So, But uh, you can see, you know, that each pebble is standing alone by itself. There's not too many balled up together, not too many blank spots. Um, that should look like that from the edge of the, whether it's a stripe on a connected sheet or foam or, or wall or whatever. It should look like that on the edge, in the middle, at the button or center line, all the way across for 150 feet. Um, and that's, it's hard to do and it takes time, but it, it, it's worth doing. You know, this picture is. The, the base and the top. Yeah, the base and the top together. You can see the the bigger drops next to the littler drops, and you're gonna play on the big ones. It's you know some some spots where they touch, but you you've got a good coverage there. It, it looks really good, um, and it's just keep track of it and work with your friends. And then this is this is after they've nipped even, um, so you see where they've cut cut the tops right off of the the taller pebble and then that base pebble sitting under there, it's still fresh, ready to roll. Um, yeah, that's those are some good pictures you got there. Um, the pebble head types, those are going to depend on what your technique tells you is going to give you the best, uh, the best coverage and dispersion of your pebble on your sheet. Um, these pictures, the first two are kind of the same thing. It's the, the higher domed um, pebble heads. I think those are the ones that Fred sells. Um, those work when your arm goes a little slower. Um, they, they really shoot the water up and up and out. Uh, it works pretty nice if you don't move really fast. Um, if you use those and you move too fast, the pebble seems to kind of pile up on the outsides or it's just, it's you're just not as even. You got to find out what works. Uh, the beaver tails, I don't know too many people, I can't think of anybody that uses it consistently for, for a game sheet. Um, we use them, uh, extra fine one just for the mid game breaks to do the slide pass, but I, I don't. But if that's what, if you try them and find out that works really good for you, then get a set of them and that's what you use. Um, these Ice Master ones at the end here, they work better for me personally and for a lot of people. It's just a nice, more even pattern to the water as it comes out and then 
a little quicker arm speed to spread the drops out across the sheet. Um, that works the best for me, and I'd say I'd say over half of people I know or, or work with use those and get them to work pretty well. Uh, in a club, you see a lot of the high dome ones just because of all the varying uh, capabilities and techniques. It It's a little more forgiving for less experienced pebblers. But at the same time, you just find what works. If you're in a club and you got a bunch of people using the same can, you find what works the best for the most people and you live with it. Um, it's all you can do. Uh, you can't be there every minute, every day by yourself doing everything. And you've got to kind of accept a few things. But but at that at that time, too, make sure everybody that's helping understands why it's important. And hopefully they're they're working to get as good as they can too. There's a decent. Uh, there's zero percent of this to scale, but it's a really good example of, um, you know, some exaggerated things that really show what can go on with uh, some less than good pebbling. Um. Yeah, here's a good quick one for you. Um, Brad's wondering if uh, a dented head is still usable or not. Is it usable? Yes. Is it perfect? No. Um, you know, they're they're made out of the soft copper. We we've had them get a little bent. You stick uh, stick a dowel or a screwdriver or whatever you got handy in there and kind of flatten it out the best you can. Um, but the problem is when they they dent that metal. That metal stretches and bends. Um, your holes aren't all pointing away from that dome uniformly anymore. You might have two uh, two holes where that stream of water is pointing at each other, colliding in the air in the wrong way, and, and making big drops or drips. Or um, you can't have that. But if you if you get it beat back into shape where it, where it's still going okay it, it's fine to keep but but you don't want to have something that looks like old crumpled up piece of paper either so those won't work because you won't get good uniform pebble across the sheet and you'll see it right away um back to this slide though um this one shows where you get your extra pebble overlap from throwing too wide um, between the sheets it um, it builds up there, and then when you're scraping the edges of your sheet, you actually uh, um, tip the edge of your blade into the eight foot, and you'll get runs and and uh, everything else there. It's it's not the best. Um, it's uh, and the same thing if it's low on on the edge or something. You'll see that you're not cutting there. You get rocks to fall. Um, you, you just have to be super diligent and deliberate about how that pebbling goes. So you don't add more variables than you already are working against to make good ice. Um, you, you don't want to put more on there by yourself by something you can correct. Um, that's. I don't know. Is there, is there anything else anybody wants to talk about, or we could go into a little deeper while we got a few minutes here? Be glad to go through any of that. Um, yeah, for sure. I don't know if everybody's seeing this, but Brad has a nice one here. Um, and, uh, and we don't talk about it enough. I assume it too much, but safety, safety, safety. Um, if you've got somebody new with, uh, you know, what the heck is it? 15 liters, whatever, however many, however much that water is, you know, but you got that heavy backpack on, walking backwards on ice. Um, keep an eye on each other. Um, we do, you know, I don't know how many pebbles in a week 
at an event and uh, every sheet, every hack, somebody steps over, three people probably holler hack when he goes across the back line. It just comes out of your mouth. Um, and, and you thank him every time because, you know, I'll have a, a whole day where I get a half a step off and I trip on every hack every time. And I just, it's just frustrating. And there's other days you can step over, over anything, but uh, it's, uh, you got to look out. Um, I've heard a story, a guy was looked back, made sure she was clear, takes off pebbling. Uh, somebody else there talking to a learn to curl group. He kicks a, a rock in front of the hack so they can be ready to play. Well, the guy's pebbling down the sheet. Uh, just about killed him. You know, he got the hack and a rock there to get over. Um, you you got to look out for each other and and uh, make sure you're careful because. Uh, and if if you make a mess, just stop. Don't panic. Let it freeze and fix it. But uh, it's not always easy to calmly go through that stuff. So it's easier just to avoid it and be safe. And I got a question from somebody who can't use the chat right now. Dave is asking it, um, if you have high eight foots and low centers, why might that happen? That comes from maybe not pebbling wide enough um, or, or maybe, you know, too fast or too slow. It just the water's piling up is such a bad word, but the water piles up on the eight foots. Um, something's not going smoothly enough in uh when you're going back and forth with that pebble head and it's it's building up there um if you're going to get compaction and get high anywhere from the curling i feel it's the it's going to be the centers where most of the stones are compacting the the pebble and pushing that into the ice uh Usually high eight foots are operator error and uh, it's pebble technique. Whether you're, and it's, I think not moving quick enough with your arm and it, when you're, you're changing direction, it, it just kind of pauses there while you're coming back a little bit longer than it should. And it shows up over time. And that's an opinion that is not a scientific test. But that's what I see. You know, as we we get later in the week and the arms get tired, we're checking eight foots a lot because uh because that's a easy spot for, for things to start going bad. It seems to be probably the first thing we see where we start having problems. And, uh, and when you say you're checking eight foots, are you looking at the ice after a scrape or are you talking about doing extra backing off a few turns and going down and seeing how the snow builds. Yep, that's one thing we didn't really talk about is uh, checking your blade and checking your ice. Uh, once you're, when you, when you start for the day, it's nice to go out in the middle of the sheet between the, between the hog lines where, where the stones don't play, take a few turns off the blade and actually get lined up perpendicular to the sheet, maybe with the, the, the tires, you know, between the center line and the forefoot or on the forefoot um, and cut towards the edge of the sheet a little bit just to see, you know, that even a nip or less than a nip, you know, you take five or six turns off and just see if that blade is cutting straight. And you might even see a little uh, delinquency in your pebbling there. So it doesn't look even. Let's move over. Um, oh, this is completely different. Move over again. Um, but once you're satisfied that you're seeing the specific trend of how the blade cuts and not variances in the pebbling, you can see if that blade's cutting a little more in the center or cutting too much on the edges, and you gotta you gotta pick up the ends with the with the cable or something. But make sure you're cutting flat before you start. And then when your sheet when you're all done cutting, you can take some turns off again and go down, you know, put the edge of the blade right on the center line and cut down the middle of the eight foot and see if that snow is piling up on the blade or if it's uh, 
actually still nice and smooth and even, um, which is what you want to see. And then you know that you've got a good flat sheet. You check the center the same way. Just back way off, uh, drive down the center, make sure it's not a big pile of snow in the middle. You want to see that you've got a flat sheet and nice even snow across it. And while you're you're doing your cutting with your different uh, passes, you can see how the when you're doing like a six pass where you're really overlapping the center three times, you can see that uh, it's getting less and less snow on the spots that you've cut, and there's and you're still getting plenty of snow on the outside edge that you're cutting the first time. So there's uh lots of ways to to monitor how you're doing as you do it and then to double check yourself when you're done and it's uh it's a good practice to do every every few scrapes you know throughout the week just to make sure things aren't building up in a bad way and you're not exacerbating problems as they start to show up Anything else anybody wanted to get into any deeper the last few minutes here? Brad's typing a question in the chat, but while he's typing, um, how I'm just curious how often it'll depend obviously on on your pebblers and and your own club, but how often typically would you recommend people cut the sidelines? If there's yeah, if there's no dividers. Mm -hmm. I like to I mean, some guys do it every day. Um when I had a club that did that, every time I did like a three pass, just to remind me, so it'd be like every other scrape, every other day. Um, it's uh, it's just up to you. You know how your pebblers are, how your sheets wear. You'll you'll learn if if you need to do it every time you scrape, you, you do it. Um, if you can get away with every few scrapes, then you do that. But it's uh. Here's Brad's question. This is how often should you scrape? Um, I mean, ideally in a perfect world with 10 people and all kinds of help and time, you, you do it after every game, but that's not realistic. Um, most clubs have, you know, a couple draws a day, if not three or four. Um, they're pebbling all the time. Groups come in. Um, you know, learn to curls, corporate groups, you know, um, you know, Fred's going to come practice before his bond spiel. You know, he, he pebbles a sheet. Uh, there can be a lot of pebble on a, on a sheet. You, if you're doing your daily scrapes there, you just have to make sure you cut all of that off. So in most clubs, I think they scrape daily. Um, you know, during a bond spiel, you, you try and scrape sometime during the day to keep things as good as possible. Um, uh, when we have championships or events, we, we scrape before every game. But uh, the volunteers in the time don't allow that usually in a club. So you probably scraping once a day and getting it down as far and as good as you can. And then hopefully having some good results with good pebblers through the night and uh, don't have too much extra work to do each morning. Looks like Brad's got another question coming, so. Perfect, I've got an answer. Let's see if they match. All done, he says. Oh. <laughs> no, well, that's why like we're here, though. So, yeah. And if you guys come up with anything after this or have an aha moment, um, reach out to me or Lauren or any or whoever you trust. Um, you know, we barely tip the touch of an iceberg in an hour on stuff that we could talk about for days. And uh, it's it's a lot easier to cover these topics in person while you're doing it and sit in the kitchen and talk about it but it's uh it's what we've got um but yeah i ask i always tell people ask 
ask a few people and hopefully get uh, get the same answer for most of them, then you know you're probably on the right lines. Don't just ask one person the same thing all the time because, you know, if that person doesn't know what they're doing, they might take you down the wrong road or um, it's just nice to get a bunch of answers. So uh, here comes one. Ah, Rebecca's got one here. It'll curl before the hog or after the hog. If it's the same stone in the same game, I would probably lean towards operator. Might be a little heavier, a little lighter. They'll they'll take off their break point at a different time. Um, I'm a terrible curler. I'm not the one to ask that. But um, and sometimes it's just the stones and. If it's consistent through a game or, you know, if you're at one club, they, they break here at a specific weight. In the next club, they break there at a specific weight. It could be how the stones are wearing, um, how they're, you know, pebbling and nipping can change that. Um, what I shoot for is somewhere after the hog line, they just start carving hard. And then that last couple feet, they go sideways. But uh, you don't always get that. And, you know, uh, that makes good TV. Uh, it makes terrible club curling. You know, you want a little little gentler arc. Uh, not quite as hard to finish in a club because it's it's supposed to be fun. You know, um, we're not all. But uh, just to, I don't ever tell people to um it comes out the wrong way when people say well it's just lead curling because it's not you, you it you're trying to have that replicated good ice for everybody um and that's what the goal of all these meetings are and the things we've been trying to do and are gonna work on getting better at um is have if you go into seattle it's going to be just like it was in Phoenix, which is just like it was in Denver, which is just like it was in Madison. And, uh, you know, it just anywhere you go is going to be relatively the same conditions because we're all trying to do the same thing. Um, in the big picture, we're trying to get medals. In the bigger picture, I feel we're trying to just have everybody have fun at their club, you know. Um, that's why we're here, you know, uh, to make this good and fun for everybody. So, and if we work and give them our best every time, um, we're going to catch it most of the time and, and people appreciate that work we do and uh, they're glad to play on it. But We're running up against the end here. Is there anything else anybody wanted to pop in before we go or? But if not, um, and like I said, get a hold of us anytime. I appreciate you taking an hour out of your evening with us. Um, these, I think these are good, uh, productive things that we do. Um, hopefully, you know, if people can't be here right at now, um, hopefully they're looking at them later and can find something out of them. Um, I know I always can look back and find something that. I'm glad we got to talk about or remind myself or something I learned. So that's good. But uh, if there's nothing else there, I'll tell everybody thank you. And uh, we will see you on the next. What's the next one, Lauren? A little teaser. Flooding. Flooding? Oh, yeah. So we're going to find a way to talk about flooding for an hour. I don't know. But uh, there's plenty of things we can pick out of there, too. So. Again, thanks everybody and uh, we'll see you somewhere next time here.